Hello, everybody. This is Amanda speaking, and welcome to this new series of PolyWorks webinar. Today, we're talking about how to include measurement results from alternate sources. Let's welcome Joshua Pepper as he's our presenter today. Joshua is a member of our the technical support group. Let me remind you that if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the question panel. I will be monitoring the questions throughout the webinar. We will have a short Q&A session at the end of the webinar. If we don't have time to answer all the questions, we will get back to you by email. We are recording this webinar, so it will be available for later viewing. Joshua, it's all yours. Thank you, Amanda. While portable coordinate measurement devices, such as a scan arm and probe, provide valuable measurement, your inspection process may require additional checks using conventional devices, such as micrometers or depth gauges. Additionally, visual checks may also be required, such as weld spots or embossments. Using PolyWorks Inspector, you can now easily integrate these additional checks into your inspection projects, resulting in a truly complete inspection with traceability. Here, before us, we have a scan of an engine manifold, where I am inspecting various components on it. We have a project with control views. I have one control view with my datums, and one control view with my bolt pattern, as well as a basic report from our project. Let's go back and take a look at our scan once again. I want to draw your attention to this area here and this area here. Let me zoom in to one of them. As we can see, we have a blind hole, which is not a through hole, if I scroll to the back here where we need to measure the depth of these blind holes. The purpose is that these blind holes serve in assistance when we assemble this engine manifold to our engine block. We will have pins that come off of the engine block that will feed into these blind holes. We need to make sure that the depth of our blind holes will allow the pins to go into the blind holes. Otherwise, we will have a, depth, a gap between the engine manifold and the engine block itself. As you can see here, I went ahead and tried to create a cylinder to check the length of my blind hole. However, I cannot rely on this cylinder to check the length as we are unable to scan the complete interior of this blind hole. If I bring up the following image, we can see the challenge with trying to scan the interior of my blind hole. As because the blind hole is very narrow and deep, it is difficult for me to get the laser to see the interior. Furthermore, if I decided I wanted to try to probe, I may have other challenges, such as not having a probe that will reach the depth of the blind hole, or I may not have a probe tip at all to use. So how can we go ahead and measure the depth of my blind holes? Well, using a depth gauge would be a perfect tool for this, but how can I implement the measurement from a depth gauge into my PolyWorks Inspector project? Allow me to go up top to measure custom measurements and create a custom measurement that is new to PolyWorks, where I can go ahead and name my custom measurement blind hole depth one. And I can go ahead and let's bring back our CAD model and anchor on the CAD model where that blind hole is. Now, I want you to bear with me while we will soon see the advantage to anchoring the location on the CAD model where that blind hole is. And let's go ahead and anchor the next one over here on our second blind hole. The great thing about custom measurements is they behave like any other measurement object we are familiar with in PolyWorks. I can see here we have a new branch in our tree view called custom measurements. If I were to select both of these blind holes and open up geometry controls, we have all of the controls we are usually accustomed to. I can enter a nominal value and I can go ahead and apply a tolerance to this value as well. As we can see here, the tolerance is plus or minus one millimeter, and I will leave that as that is what our call, print calls for. If we go ahead and take another look at these custom measurements, I can define the measured value for each custom measurement from the value that I acquire from using my depth gauge. On this part here, on our first piece, I went ahead and measured the depth of 11.562, and I want to point out the advantage of a note here. I can apply any note that I want, such as a serial number or a calibration date that pertains to that depth gauge. So for us, if I wanted to, 
I could go ahead and type in a calibration date. And we can have that stored with our measurement object in Polyworks. I can also go ahead and create control views. So if I wanted to go to my control reviewer, I can go to all my controls. And if I wanted to, I can create a control view and I will include the first two cylinders that I tried to use to measure the length and create a control view. And we can see that we can also create control views from custom measurements just like we can with any other measurement object. Let's go ahead and inspect our next piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a scan of the second part that I already went ahead and scanned for us. And this is the new plane inspection we've become familiar with in the past where we're going to go acquire our data through scanning or probing. We're gonna go through the process of aligning uh, we're going to extract all of our features and we come to our first custom measurement. So if we take a look here, we have that annotation that I earlier anchored when I asked you to bear with me, where we can see the location of the blind hole and exactly where we need to probe the depth of the blind hole. Notice how my note stays with us. So the advantage here is if I was running multiple pieces the same day and that morning I calibrated my depth gauge, I would not have to re-enter the calibration date. So the advantage of the note can become very powerful. On my second part, I measured 11.84, and let's go ahead and hit create. If I wanted to, I could add the same note for this uh, blind hole depth, but we'll go ahead and just enter our measured value, which is 11.85. Now, I want to point out a couple more quick things here. Uh, we can see the name of our custom measurement object, blind hole depth two as well as up top it says measure blind hole depth too. But at the moment, I don't really know what gauge to use. Um, I don't really have any pictures to assist me. So let's go ahead and finish up this piece. And I want to explain that we can add measurement guidance to our custom measurements, just like we can with any other measurement in Polyworks. Let's go ahead and select both of our blind holes and go to the properties. And under the measurement tab, we can add measurement guidance, such as a message. So I could say specify using gauge B42, the model number of our depth gauge, measure the conical bottom of oh, hole. And we could also go ahead and attach an image here. And earlier I prepared an image for us where I'm just holding the depth gauge next to the engine manifold. So we can just go ahead and apply that there. Let's go ahead and inspect our second piece, rather our third piece, with the new measurement guidance added. Let's go ahead and save the changes. And I've went ahead and already scanned our third piece, so we'll go ahead and bring that in. And I want us to take notice now of the measurement guidance that has been added giving us more information and further having a, a consistent way of measuring the blind holes. So as we walk through the play inspection, we now see at the very top the message that I entered using gauge B42, measured the conical bottom of the hole, as well as the image that I attach. So now I have even more information to help me understand exactly what I need to measure with my depth gauge. So if other inspectors were to run this program, they can see exactly what's going on. So for this piece, I measured 11.56. And for our next one, I measured 11.85 on blind hole depth two. So we'll go ahead and hit create and we'll finish up the inspection of our blind holes. So now you may be asking yourself, well, Josh, I understand that we can use conventional measurement tools such as a depth gauge to check measurements on my part. However, what if I have a visual check such as looking for the quality of weld spots? Well, in our case, we actually have to check, let's go back to the scan, uh, an embossment on the interior here, which I refer to as a sundial. And we need to make sure that the embossment is not only present, but is uh, easily to determine and read. So let's go ahead and we can add a custom measurement for a spot check on this. Let's go back to measure and let's go to custom measurements create. This time I want a qualitative custom measurement. And let's go ahead and give this a name, sundial check. 
And once again, we can anchor on our model the location of that embossment. And now we are ready to go ahead and add our measurement guidance. So let's go into measurement, add in the message. I could say verify and check uh, readability. And we can go ahead and add an image. And I can go ahead and I've already prepared an image for us where I'm basically just highlighting the location of the sundial on the scan of a part. We can hit apply and close. And let's go ahead. And I also want to point out that on this piece, we can define our measure. And for qualitative checks, we just have pass, warning, or fail uh, because they're not controlled by a numerical value per se. And we can go ahead and add a note if we wanted to, to here as well. Let's just go ahead and hit create and inspect our last piece. So once again, I've went ahead, scanned our fourth part for us, so we'll import that scan file. And if I zoom in here on our fourth piece, we can see that we do have an embossment present, but we don't really see uh, good detail in it. So it's, it's kind of a poor embossment. So I can go ahead and uh, when we get to that sundial check, I can account for that. But let me first go ahead and enter the values of my blind hole depth one on the fourth piece, which is 11.85 on this one. This one is 11.78. And so for quality checks, like I said, they're determined by pass warning or fail. For us, as I mentioned, our sundial doesn't have good detail to it. So you can put in warning that it is present but lacks uh, detail or it's not readable or whatever the case is. So we can go ahead and hit create and finish up the inspection of our fourth piece. So as we can see here, adding measurement guidance and uh, having qualitative and quantitative checks behave like any other measurement object in PolyWorks. The last thing that I want to quickly show is we also have full SPC analysis on any of our custom measurements, such as looking at the blind hole depth one, I have values per piece, overall statistics, or any other SPC control that you need to be concerned with. As we can see, I now have a complete inspection that utilizes my portable coordinate measurement device, as well as utilizing traditional measurement methods. Whether it is quantitative checks or qualitative checks, PolyWorks Inspector now allows you to have one project that holds all of your inspection points with control views, reports, and SPC analysis. This concludes our webinar on how to include measurement results from alternative sources. Thank you, Joshua. So we have a couple of questions here. Uh, you added a calibration note during the blind hole measurement. Can you add that note to the report table? Yes. If I go ahead and uh, take a look, I'll just create a, create a quick uh, reports table here. And if we go back to our reports, I can simply click on the table, I'll close my geometry controls, click on the table, go to edit table, and I can just simply go ahead and right click on adding the note column. Now we can see the note added right there in the report table. Okay, thank you. Another question. Can you define pass, fail, and warning criteria for the quantitative measurements like the blind hole one? Exactly. If we go back to blind hole depth and take a look at the geometry controls, bring those up here, we can see that I can apply upper warning or lower warning values. So, for example, if I wanted to put this one in warning, depending on the tolerances specified, of course, I could go ahead and see that we will show that passing, but yellow because it is warning. So I want to uh, kind of draw... Uh, comparison to the qualitative check on our sundial, where that was driven by pass fail or warning, simply a, a selection, where here the warnings are driven by a, a value put in through tolerancing. Okay. And one more question for today. Are these measurements supported in the sequence editor if creating a custom sequence? Absolutely. If I go ahead and bring up my sequence editor here and create an auto-generated sequence, from our inspection, we can see at the end of our sequence, 
that we have all three custom measurements that I created uh, throughout today showing up right here in our sequence. Okay, thank you one more time, Josh. And that's all the time that we have for today. This webinar has been recorded and will be available on the Enoughmetric software website. Navigate to the support section. It will also be available on the Enoughmetric software channel on YouTube. A reminder that we hope to see you at the Bollywoods Conference USA 2018 in Novi, Michigan on April 4th and 5th. The two-day event will be filled with Polyverse 2018 launch presentation, step-by-step -step technical workshops, Polyverse success stories by experienced users, and more. Register today and take advantage of the early bird until March 1st. For all the details, visit our website at www.ignifmetric.com. Our next webinar, Optimize Components Assembly Using Virtual Gauges, scheduled for March 8th, 2018. Thank you for joining us this morning. See you next time. Bye-bye.